We're good. We, we're mm -hmm. okay. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome back to uh, to uh, uh, Pathfinder, uh, the UE's West March game. Um, I am joined by uh, four wonderful players, uh, new to the, uh, the 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 campaign specifically, or at least this particular campaign. Um, we are we are going to be joining a new group of players in the uh, pool of players that have signed up for the West March game, and uh, and they're going to be partaking in a different quest from the 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 adventurers you have come to know in the in the Dragonlands. Um, so here in just a moment, we're going to go over and let them introduce themselves. But remember, as always, this is a uh, homebrew world, so a lot of things in this world may be a little different than what you're used to. And also, I do house rule a good little bit because I really don't like rules as written to a lot of systems. So um, if something is different or something like that, please don't leave comments in my comment section that say XYZ rule was wrong. I know, and I don't care. Thanks, Dave. Uh, uh, and now uh, let's bring my players in. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm scared. Oh, I'm not. oh, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be too scared. I won't. I'm not gonna be mean to you like I am. Uh, like I am. Some of my Pathfinder groups. I promise. You've never played before. It's okay. Uh. Uh, so we are going to, uh, introduce, uh, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves, uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to pick on you each individually. So, um, how about we start with Abby? Why don't you introduce your poppy? Fuck, sorry. I, <laughs> I'm already starting off, already starting off, uh, starting off great. But yeah, Poppy, why don't you introduce yourself and your character? Hello, I am Poppy, also actually known as Abby. Either is good. I respond to all because Abby is so common in this world. Huzzah! But my online persona Huzzah. is Poppy. Uh, I am new to Pathfinder. I use the she, her pronouns. And my character is named Alula Makani. And they are a storm soul sylph. Or slith. Uh, Magus. Ooh. Uh, I don't know what any of these words mean, but I thought it was cool. So here we go. They use any pronouns. Awesome. Um, alrighty. Uh, do you want to any, is there any other information you'd like to give on your character? Or would you like that to be, re uh, backstory stuff and shit to be re revealed through gameplay? Uh, do you want me to describe character? Uh, yeah, absolutely. If you don't mind describing what they look like, I would be very grateful for that. Okay, 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 okay. I have arts elsewhere. Yip, yip, da, ba, ba. Uh, Alula pretty much looks mostly of the femi on the feminine side, but kind of responds to any pronouns you use. Uh, goes with the wind kind of ordeal. Aha, uh -huh, knock on wood. Sylph, yeah. Um, they are about... 5'11", have bright, like, light blue hair that kind of is pulled in either a long braid to the side, or in this case, like, a messy bun. Um, because if it is out in the wild, it moves to, com to like, uh, show off their emotions, so they don't want their emotions to be on their sleeve. So into a bun they go. Uh, bright blue eyes, the color of the storm, pale skin with, like... Kind of like bioluminescent, like storm patterns. So they're like pale complexion. And currently they're wearing very fancy, uh, noble clothes with like a chain shirt above it, over it. Awesome. Looks that like they come sounds... from money. <clears throat> yeah, it sounds like they come from money. That's what I was about to say. That sounds like nobility. Wonderful. Um, how did your character come to the Dragonlands? Uh, good question. Um, I'm thinking because of how I spent my money. Uh, they are broke. Or, they got, they came to the Dragonlands to seek opportunity, but during this trial and error, uh, they ended up spending all their money and are kind of stranded on said Dragonlands and can't get off. So they're like, mm. Wonderful. How do so, I make money quick? Help. <laughs> there were 
there were two envoys that would have come from – there are three envoys yeah. that would have come from the mainland that would have maybe brought you here. Um, so I'm going to give you three city options, and okay. then we're going to kind of – I'm going to kind of help you build your backstory since we weren't, didn't have time to kind of go over that uh, in private. Uh, so the three envoys that came to these lands were from Montalibe, uh, Eos, and, and, um, and Moon's Reach. Uh, each of them are from a different part of the continent. If you bring up the uh, if you bring up the world map for mm -hmm. yourself, the, the it should be the file labeled Big Bitch. Yes. Um, you can kind of see where those cities are. Um, and so Eos is the primary like uh, area where the largest concentration of tiefling and human populations are. Um, and then, uh, Moon's Reach is, uh, Eos is an, imp uh, an empire, they are run by the Empress Immortum Clementine Virilius, mm -hmm. uh, an immortal tiefling who, you know, has claimed the throne of Eos after the last king was a douchebag and she cut his head off. Um, then there's, uh, Montalibe. Montalibe is the largest... Uh, commercial hub uh, in the entirety of the world. They are the largest trading hub in the entire world, and they are, that is also the home city of your other character yep. that you play in my campaigns, <laughs> yep. Jessamine. Uh, uh, so there's so there's that, uh, and then Moon's Reach is a theocratic city which is run by the goddess Tethala, the goddess of the moon. Um, it is uh, a city. That is, uh, there are quite a few wealthy people there, but typically the nobility that come from there are like high monks, very powerful casters, things of that nature. So these would be the three cities you could have potentially come from. Mm -hmm. Or if you want later, we can work on kind of more backstory stuff, and maybe you just came from one of those cities after your, wherever your home city is, kind of was like, hey – Get, get out. <laughs> Sweats. Get Sweat out. Face. <laughs> uh, I think I do like that second option. So, but I didn't uh, think Montalibe. they. Yeah. Or no, I mean oh, like so... the the oh, second the, option the... of. Okay. They might have get kicked out of their hometown and uh, came to a new. I think they probably sailed out of Eos. Okay. But that's not their hometown. All right. That's awesome. Awesome. We will work on where their actual hometown was privately, I do believe. Yes. Wonderful. Um, next up, we're gonna I'm gonna pick on you. Jess, Jess, why don't you why don't you uh give us your your uh introduce yourself and your character and give us a little bit of backstory on your on your Blorbo. Uh hi, my name's Chester. I've I've only ever played Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition. I know nothing, but I'm here for a good time. Uh, I play Mid Midas Sonder, uh, who is a Toonkin, which is, uh, a homebrew race of spells. Uh, but basically, imagine, imagine your favorite OC just could walk and talk now. Hi, that's me. Basically, um, what the what the Toonkin are, just so so I can because this you yeah. are the first player, you're the first player I've ever convinced to actually play a fucking Toonkin. So, <laughs> what the Toonkin are in my world are a race of sentient ink blots. Uh, they were given life by artists who had latent magical abilities, uh, and those artists were able to um, uh, were able to. Uh, basically bring their OC to life. Um and like like Jester said. And uh and so these now uh now uh, essentially awakened drawings have the ability to walk and talk in the physical form and should they be killed, they just go back to being an ink blot and get to be redrawn uh, unless uh, they are set on fire. I'm playing a barbarian um, I have, I have, uh, uh, wait, do I describe how my character looks? Is that yes, a thing please. I'm also supposed to do? Yes, please. I would appreciate it. Uh, so they have gray skin, um, 
Uh, that's kind of purplish tinted. They have like white sort of like battle paint marks on them. Uh, mm -hmm. They got short uh, horns uh, uh, like at the front of their head that start out like orange and go to yellow. Uh, pretty much uh, they're, just a, they're just a typical barbarian. Uh, definitely not resembling anything from any other franchise ever. Def no. Definitely not a homestuck troll. It's not at not. all. <laughs> it's not a homestuck troll. Uh, other than that, the only thing I think we we talked about was uh, I have a follower that's my artist that won't stop following me. And I've accepted it, unfortunately, at this point. Unfortunately. <laughs> no, you love your followers. <laughs> that that actually that actually brings us into uh so our guest player this evening, Creepy, um, you are playing the follower character. So here's what I'm gonna let you do. I oh, will no. give you the opportunity to on the fly, should you want, give them a small backstory. Okay. So did this follower character create the sentient ink yeah. blob? Yeah, so it is the, this is the artist of the sentient ink blob. Oh, God. Okay. Um, let's see. What's this person's name? Ditrix? Uh, yeah, Ditrix. Ditrix. All right. Ditrix was a very lonely child, uh, thrust into the orphan system when Knowles killed her parents. We're gonna go with there. Knowles killed their parents, uh, which is why their favorite enemy is just to murder Knowles. And while in there, uh, they would not shut up about Knowles, and all of the kids were like, wow, that's fucking weird. Uh, so they were kind of ignored, so they started doodling and whatnot, and they came up with this person who would be their friend to, to kill all of the Knowles, and found, and ended up with a, a very, a very, uh, a very aggressive uh, person with a giant axe, as as the person they invented. From my very kind of own mind, Foster's it was, home it was, for imaginary friends style. <laughs> yes, it was. They had they had this like there was this one recurring, uh, I guess, story that got released in the town uh, called called Hamsteak, right? And and they thought it would be fun to make their own OC for it. Fantastic! Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, That's great. Uh, so your your character does have some art. If you'd like to describe them, uh, yeah, we've got. Oh, what do we've got here? We've got we've got short short brownish curly hair, uh, with like a like a black toga and what appears to be, uh, uh, jester boots with the jingly bells on them. Uh huh. And they vary, and they and they long bow. Oh. Absolutely. Um, alrighty. Uh, thank you very much for just very improving that. I love. I I know I'm already gonna love you as a player. Uh, uh, so uh, if you would uh, if you wouldn't mind now introducing your just you as a, a person, uh, because you will be uh, from what I understand coming back as a player with your own character in later in later sessions. <laughs> Yes, I will be coming back with a character with an actual backstory that isn't a reference to a a, a long running show or webcomic. <laughs> but I'm creepy. Uh, she they pronouns. Uh, I've what the never fuck played their pronouns. <laughs> never played Pathfinder First Edition before, but I've read the rule book too many times, and I will forget it. That's okay. Um. Yeah, uh, Jester, you, you did miss saying your pronouns. What are yours? Uh, my name is Jester. My pronouns are it, it's, or they. It doesn't matter. Either one's fine. Alrighty, and then, uh, Carlotta. Will you, would you, would you introduce yourself and your, and your character, please? Yeah, so, I'm Carlotta, or Benedlara or Benny for short, um, online. Um, my pronouns are Chi Fei, and I am playing 
access the shadow uh Redfall Quitch um who basically um she is um her fur is pitch black her skin is also pitch black um the little color that is around all over her body is mostly around her on the eyes as her irises are a dark brown and her nails are painted a dark purple um you can you can also see white markings of um painted of chemically bleached hair in a pattern um similar to a web coming out from her kimo from her black and purple kimono um she's also always carrying a very tacky purple and green bag that she that seems to clash with her entire style and um general i general way of presenting herself um so far um i'm going to say that she keeps her city of origin as a secret to herself because I forgot to talk about that with you, um, Belle. So here is here is the one thing that I will tell you. You are the only one who has the opportunity, as you are a rat folk, to be a native of the Dragonlands. Because okay, I'm picking one that. Of, <laughs> one, of the few, one of the few races that still inhabit the Dragonlands are the rat folk, because the kingdom of the Rat Queen is very close to the city of Wreckford, which is the area where you are. Um gonna be starting your your journey in uh i also realized that i did not give you a token so i had to do that real quick which is done and done got it um yeah so she is from the dragon dance now but she's still going to keep that a secret because reasons because she doesn't like telling people <laughs> i don't like telling uh, people where i'm from what are you talking about <laughs> My experience with Pathfinder is the complete opposite of these of the entire group of players. My first experience with table, tabletop RPGs was Pathfinder first edition, roughly four to five years ago. And right after my first character, I immediately started running games. So I am very familiar with Pathfinder first edition. Uh, you know what? That's actually a good a good question. Uh, quickly to quickly go over, how long have each of us been playing TTRPGs? Uh, uh, let's go with Poppy. How long have you been playing tabletop role playing games? Ooh, thirteen years, I think. Oh, good. So I'm not the only one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's been a long time. I've been I've been DMing for about fourteen now. <laughs> yeah, I mean I played like other games. I didn't start with D and D. I played like I think I had a Monster of the Week game at first that I played in like an attempt to VTM that didn't go well because I didn't understand the rules. And then yeah. I went to D and D in like twenty fifteen. So I I have been a player since. 1996 and I have been a DM since 2007 um I started with Ad Advanced Dungeons and Dragons second edition mm -hmm. um and I've played through literally all of them I've I even have my own set of like the the like red box basic D D, all of that i am one of few people that i know that i you know thaco makes sense to it i'll never use it even if i do ba like if i even if i run a basic D D, I refuse to use thaco it's stupid uh, <laughs> but uh but yeah so i've been i've been i've been playing for a hot minute um creepy how long have you been playing ttrpgs so well, this is sad because I I've been playing maybe four years in like my junior year of high school. 
That's that's respectable. This is. I've had I've had people who have never played TTRPGs before in my campaigns. So like you're totally understandable and valid. <laughs> um, Jester, how long have you been playing? Um, uh, I am absolutely amazed that you guys remember years. Um, God, I my first game I ever played, I played with Poppy. No, I think no. no. Oh, was my first game with Rhoda? Yep, it must have been with it's him. The, it was that Curse of Straw game. Yeah, that Curse of Strahd game. Um, so um, that oh, Curse of Strahd bringing us together. That was seven years ago. Seven, maybe. Uh, yeah. Um, I've been. I'm. I'm still. I guess fairly new. I guess in terms of y'all's. Uh, seven, I would say you're like a journeyman. You're not. You're not new anymore. You're you're good. You're good on that. Man, front. sometimes it sometimes it feels like it. <laughs> you know that's understandable. And like, if it can feel new again every time you play, like that's that's kind of a magical feeling, in my opinion. Yeah. Um. um but yeah. Uh, I haven't been playing as long as you guys have, but uh, I think it's pretty neat. I'm actually branching out to new systems now. Yeah. It's it's great. Okay. So we're gonna pan in to the town of Reckford, a small uh, shanty town built out of the scraps of wrecked ships and, like, driftwood and just supplies that can be found around the area where the initial envoy ship to come to the Dragonlands uh, landed, or I should say crashed, um, because uh, the Empress of Eos and the high leadership in... Moon's Reach were basically like, hey, there's like an entire continent with no people on it in the south. And we want to know why. Like, why is no one there? Um, turns out there are some people there, just very sparse amounts of people. Um, so right now you are creating kind of a, uh, a colony of... Uh, new settlers f within the Dragonlands, and each of your characters is kind of new to this area. Uh, so what, we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask each of you to uh, to tell me where you are in the town uh, as the first day kind of that you're off the boat uh, or kind of having explored through the jungle in, in some people's cases to get here. Um when the notice is put up on the notice board about the Knoll quest. We're gonna start with Abby. Where were you when uh the notice board when the notice was put up for the Knoll quest? Uh I assume would it be like in the town, like the equivalent of a town square, or would it be like in a so tavern? The notice board is sitting outside of the the Windy Winch, which is a small saloon style tavern okay. that um, basically can you you can rent an apartment there that's like uh, two silver a month, and you it, and you get the apartment for the full month. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and the in front of the Windy Winch is uh, the kind of the notice board. Uh, you, uh, as you, you know, uh, you know, wherever you are when this happens, you do see a small rat folk uh, putting up her own notice, and a group of uh, ragtag adventurers going off on the quest that she had put up uh, uh, in reference to. This is the same day. You guys currently are in the same day that the other Pathfinder, or the, the other, the uh, other uh, West March group is leaving town. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, she probably, uh, I'm going to roll, like, a d20 as a percentile just to see something. 1d20. She, are... I was, mm -hmm. was going to say, she probably is, uh, no longer, she's, like, on a timeout from the saloon for being too okay. rowdy. Oh, wonderful. Um, um, so how rowdy did you get, is my question. Because if you were too rowdy, you may have been removed by their, uh, by their, uh, 
the the um security of the mm-hmm. windy winch mm-hmm. uh a goliath man named gustav remington uh i think it was probably it was going to get to that point and then uh gustav probably put a hand or like gestured them to get out of the saloon and they looked up looked at how weak they are and went all right okay i am escorting myself post haste do not worry <laughs> there i'm going the door there i am out like the wind so, goodbye so i am going to post a picture of gustav if i yes. can find it <laughs> yes uh in in the in in the roll 20 or in not in the roll 20 in the um in the discord uh cuz i have a picture of him and uh he is 100,000% uh fantasy um goliath uh uh teddy roosevelt yeah uh, this is Gustav Remington, if you look in Westmarch General. Uh, look at, look at, uh, look at him. The mm. gunslinger Goliath, uh, or half-giant in, in, in Pathfinder. Uh-huh. Um, and he, he just kind of sat, yeah, that is exactly what it's named, he's named after, actually. <laughs> <laughs> the Gustav gun. Um, but yeah, uh, so, uh, he also will die if you throw thermite on him. Um, but, so he, he will, uh, place a hand on your shoulder and just kind of gesture to the door and go, all right, Missy, you gotta go. Uh, of, of course, yes, I am leaving. I, one foot out in front of me, the next foot out, I am going. Thank you for your hospitality. I'll be back when I am, uh, you know, goodbye. Sober. Yep, good, (laughs) good, (laughs) bye. (laughs) <laughs> uh and he will like wave you out as he uh cleans off his monocle and puts it back on <laughs> it's like um because he's like gunslinger it's just like there is a, oh yeah. a noticeable weapon on the hip or something like that in his hand in his hand he carries yep, it around yep. with him all the time yep that's what i probably that's probably why a lot alula went yep i'm out i'm going he nope. is he is an 11 foot tall yep. 480 pound man with a handgun in his hand at all times they are not the cocky kind of drunk who will throw hands with everyone that's jessamine uh this one will ski daddle and get her yeah this one doesn't want to get actually choke slammed <laughs> through a table because while he carries his gun he uses it very seldomly he just doesn't like putting it in a holster because it tarnishes the brass yes yes uh, yes a respectable he, gentleman yes i he understand. Has a giant right hand for a reason uh, uh so okay so you would exit upon exiting the uh upon exiting the um the tavern you see uh, at the at the uh, quest board, um, the captain of the guard. Let me find her name. Uh, her name is Lydia Ironhide. Lydia Ironhide is a um, is a uh, tall uh, uh, catfolk woman who wears a like studded leather armor. And uh, I will actually, once again, uh, post a picture in Westmarch General. Uh, she is a lioness, uh, and she is tacking up the, um, the, uh, the notice for the Knoll uh, quest. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to go over to Jester and Midas. Where are uh, so also Midas is Midas with Dietrich at the moment? Are you two together, or are you, you know, in separate areas? That is know, that is the question. Ideal, you know, ideally, I think Midas is purposely trying to find something that requires like them to be separated from Dietrich. However. <laughs> It's not going well because I've got really good stuff like tracking skill. Yeah. <laughs> Became very, very good at tracking your friends. They're trying very hard for like, oh no, I need I need to do this thing all by myself. 
just by me, only me. And then turns around like, oh. by myself. <laughs> See, Dietrich hears that and immediately assumes you're planning a surprise for them. So they follow. <laughs> I think I love like, I love this dynamic. I love this dynamic already. Okay. Um so where are you in the town? So the town itself is uh not super big. Here, what I'll do is I'll bring you guys over on the roll twenty to the town map. Um the town isn't super big. It's got a few like a little industrial area where the businesses are on the, the southern side, and on the northern side is a more residential area. Um, separated by a, a river that has a small bridge in the center. Um, there's a wall around the city made of a deep wood uh, and two roads that lead out to the north. Um, and so you are within Reckford. Where are you in Reckford when this is happening, is my question. I think, um... Wood, wood the two of you have rented an apartment room or are you staying in one of the like small abandoned like huts that exist within Reckford that are uh, literally just open for for like you can just take them um i think um uh, hmm. yeah originally i was like i had it all thought out in my head and then it all just fell up my ears um I think does have an apartment. Thought they could be sneaky okay. about it. Could not be sneaky about it. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Dietrich be like, you mean our apartment? Yes. <laughs> our apartment. Yeah, absolutely. So you guys have a an apartment in the Wendy Winch. Uh, the Wendy Winch, the way it is kind of built is the bottom is like this standard saloon. And then on top, it like becomes like a, a trapezoid of sorts uh, where the second second uh, like room, like layer of the, the, the house is wider than the bottom. And then it comes up to like uh, so that it can house like six little apartments. You have uh, two bedrooms, a um, a like. Uh, the most primitive shower you've ever seen. Uh, there is indoor plumbing, uh, thankfully. Um, and and then you have uh, a just general little common room in the center of all the apartments that acts as essentially your living room. Uh, and likely you are awoken, the two of you, to the sound of the noise of the hammer on the out, on the notice board outside. Uh, I think... And you can look out the window of the common room to see what's going on. I think I think the conversation that's exactly happening as this is going down is my is just barely woken up. Sees Dietrich is already like trying to peek in the door, <laughs> and and just like throws something at the door. I guess you have your own room. I have my room. Oh, I, was, I wasn't sure if I should wake you up because there was a hammer outside and it was very unusual. The hammer is not going to hurt you. You it will might be hurt you, fine. and I gotta make sure you're okay. I look at me. I'm fine. Go, go, go. See what it is. I'm gonna go get ready without someone staring at me. Go. Okay, yeah, goodbye. of course, of course. Good, good, uh -huh. Goodbye. Just don't leave. Don't leave. I'll know if you leave. <laughs> I'm not gonna leave you. <laughs> Good <laughs> goodbye. Yeah, yeah, I'll be back in like two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Dietrich look at whatever the fuck was just posted. I'm gonna take my time getting ready and lock my door. Okay. Uh, Dietrich, uh, yeah. you, where, what are you doing immediately after this, is my question. The door shuts, then you hear the lock, uh, latch, the, the, the deadbolt, kind of go, the big, the big thunk of the deadbolt. What are you doing <laughs> after that? Chair in front of the door, check the notice board. 
<laughs> chair in front of the door. I love that. Everybody just hears a crash of a window. <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, as you kind of go downstairs, you see, uh, you see, you know, there are some patrons kind of coming in, and you see Gustav uh, escorting, uh, escorting. Um, don't tell me, don't tell me. I will uh, Alula out of the um, out of the out of the building, uh, and he'll wave at you and go, "Good morning. How are you?" Uh, I I heard a hammer, and I'm coming to investigate that. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, the uh, the guard captain's outside. Uh, she's posting some uh, notice up on uh, on our little board. There seems that somebody's she's offering some work for good, honest adventuring folk. I'm good, honest adventuring folk. I'm gonna take a look at that. <laughs> All righty. Uh, so you head outside uh, where Alula is, and. Um, this is where we smash cut over to uh, Sess the Shadowed. Where are you in the town? You would have had to have come through the jungles to the south uh, east of of the town to get to Reckford from where you're from. Wait, the southeast of the town? Just so not the city. Okay. The... I'll, I'll bring you over back over to the uh, the uh, main. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I will actually ping where you you're from. You're from right here. Okay, and Redford is there. Okay. Yep. So you've been you've been on uh, like a three day journey from from Redford to from your your hometown to Redford. Okay, got it. In that case, she would. Probably first seek a place to rent a cheap place at for now. Um, okay. Just with a so temporary thing. You do have you have a couple options as I had said earlier. There's uh, there's the Windy Winch, which is uh, uh, two two silver for a month, or there are several houses in Reckford that at one point were occupied, but because of knoll raids and uh, just general nonsense happened that comes out of the jungle uh quite a few of the Reckford residents have died so they're just open huts that are they're not the greatest domiciles but they're free i think she would um pick one of those for now oh. while she finds um a place to buy for herself and gets okay. the funds for it um so your little house is essentially built out of pallets. Um, like it's it's not a great place to live. It's you've got a wash tub basin, you've got a little bed that's made out of like what wood they could find and uh, like down mattress. Uh, you've got you're very lucky it's not made of hay. Um, you've got a wardrobe and you live in one room. Um, you, you do have a, a hand crank water pump, so you do have running water. Got um, it. That is the only thing she was worried about. <laughs> yeah, you do have running water. Um, and you even have the ability to, uh, to, should you spend a gold piece, have the town's mage, his name is Clive Williford, uh, install what is known as a heating crystal so you can have hot running water oh i am definitely spending that gold immediately as soon as she can <laughs> yeah absolutely you could have done that when you got to town so you yep. you are you're in the little residential district and you also hear because the the um the the ca guard captain isn't being quiet about this she is very like heavily like hitting like she's got a little light hammer that can be used as a weapon, and she's using that to essentially hammer in the signpost that says she needs people to help with, you know, knolls uh, in in the borderlands. Oh, I like it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> not at all. Not at all subtle. She she is she is a uh, she is a definitely a uh, crass crass and loud lady, uh, which is which is wonderful because that's just you know it's one of her. Her favorite, her favorite things. Um, okay, so 
Uh, I'm assuming you go out and you also kind of have gathered near near where the um, the quest board is. Yes. Awesome. So each of you kind of kind of see her uh, kind of look around and smile and go, uh, would you folks be interested in some work? Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, Midas, you're still locked in your room. Fuck, you're right. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> I say it from the smashed window. <laughs> <laughs> Halfway to crawling out the, of it. The uh, the the um the the uh, guard captain looks up at you and goes, um and goes, you know you're probably gonna have to pay for that. I'll pay for it. It's All right. fine. <laughs> All righty. Um, and she'll she'll nod and go. You need a hand, uh, darling. Me and uh, I got it. Good. Uh, are you trying to climb down to where they are? No. Eventually, this door is going to be open because she can't go anywhere without me. So, okay, I'm spiding my time. <laughs> you just broke the window instead of opening it. I get it. Uh, uh but yeah. So uh, she kind of nods and goes, "All right then. Uh, okay." Uh, and y'all folks, I'm assuming also. Uh, want to work? Uh, so I, well, I'm I'm in desperate need because I've only got two guards here left and me, uh, and we can't really leave the town. But unfortunately, we've been getting raided uh, over the past few weeks by uh, knoll bandits. Uh, these knolls come from somewhere in the south. We don't exactly know where they're coming from, but we surmise that there is a uh, a um, a cave to the southern region of 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 uh, of here that uh, they may be coming from uh, about two, three, four, five, six days out from where we are now. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and I'm willing to a pay uh, a good good money per knoll head. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, I'll give you 150. Uh, gold uh, for just information on where the gnolls are, but if you can kill them and bring me back their heads, I'll give each of you 50 gold a knoll head. Oh, I, Alula's eyes are like glowing and sparkling <laughs> <laughs> at the thought of like oh, all this money <laughs> that they could have and goes, and should Absol you, absolutely. Should, no, you, no. should you not want to decapitate them and carry their severed heads with you? The other option is you just bring me a pair of ears, and I'll give you a hundred. I'll give you fifty gold pieces a piece for per pair. Of course, of course, absolutely. I'm in. I'm in. I'm sh <laughs> start shaking their hand vigorously. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, the, uh, the lioness will shake your hand back and go. I'm glad to see you. You in. You're in such a charitable mood to help the people of Reckford. It. We need more people like you. I, I, you know. Uh, thank you so much. Of course, of course, of course. De definitely thinking you're in this for the altruistic reasons and not the money. <laughs> <laughs> now, conversely, um, Sis is actually going to be in it, be not because of the money, be but because she actually wants to help, but she's going to ask, why 50 gold? Uh, because that's the going rate for bounties in the Dragonlands. The only other things we've ever put bounties on are giant monsters uh i actually there's a similar uh, in that area where we believe the gnolls are coming from there's a monster uh it's essentially a giant fire beetle uh it's a mutant fucking creature that's bigger than the town wall and breathes fire and uh should you kill that i'll i'll we have a keep it's a small little little thing she'll kind of gesture just outside the wall of the city to this like broken down uh like it's it's essentially just like what a castle like a castle keep is without like a wall or anything around it it's just the stone structure we got that uh and i'll give you that and and uh and 500 gold pieces should you kill that beastie 
but I don't know. I don't know anybody that's strong enough to kill it. It's it's a pretty it's a pretty big beast. That's good information to have. Um, I think I'll start with the gnolls. <laughs> God, I hate gnolls. This sounds fun. See, well, we're, we're... I... no, can't... you can I'm, 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 I'm glad that that all of you are willing to help. So we'll uh, let me. I, I what I'm going to do is since all of you are just so willing to volunteer and and help us out, I'm going to give you uh, uh, one of Reckford's, uh carts so you don't have to walk on foot if y'all don't mind. No, no, please, thank you. It. Uh, and she will she'll kind of walk off and, and come back with a mule-drawn cart. Uh, it's just a little canvas-covered wagon, uh, but it looks like it'll probably fit all of you uh, if one of you rides on the mule. Wow, I'd sure love to be down there right now. If someone <laughs> let me out of my room. Uh, do we, do you we... see the, 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 the fucking uh, guard captain look up and go, man, I... I you if you needed help i can come up there if you need <laughs> you know no no, no it's no, a, it's okay no, i think i no, might have so... accidentally knocked over a chair and no. i'll run no, inside no. and move the chair someone no someone locked me in my room on purpose Alula. Well, you know i don't i don't know who i don't know who that was but if you mm -hmm. want me to i can i can look into it and i can get down to the bottom of it and make sure oh, they spend the night what? in my jail cell oh you know what that'd be great actually if you still would start looking into that for me i would love that Alula oh, just... I, I'll, I'll get that done. I was gonna say, Alula, Alula just looks at you and goes, jump. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. It, are you are you gonna jump? Does Midas I think, jump? I think as soon as, like, Ditrix has entered the building... <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, There's roll me an here. acrobatics check. Acrobatics. Yeah, sure, boss. Oh, God. Okay. Midas doesn't want to be anywhere near Daytrix. <laughs> they just jump out the window. Oof. Okay. Give me one second. Um, give me one second. I, uh, I will eat the damage <laughs> if it means no, I do not have <laughs> No, you're not going to have to eat the damage because, thankfully, you have a, um, you have a very altruistic uh, cat girl just kind of waiting to catch you. Uh, so I gotta, I gotta roll for, for Captain Lydia. Uh, just give me one second while I find her character sheets. Alula's like, jump. It's like, okay! It's just like, oh no, okay. I'm stuck in this room with a broken window that I clearly didn't smash. What can I do? And then Alula's like, uh, jump. Easy. Jump. Easy solution. Easy solution. Yeah, easy, easy solution. <laughs> well, one hundred percent. To to Alila, who's very dexterous and very smart, she would think that would be the practical idea. Be like, yeah, meanwhile, that's easy. You know this this barbarian who falls like a fucking rock. Yeah, don't eat oh. shit. Okay, so. Is this the sort of a gay romance between me and the captain? I'll do it. It could be. <laughs> Oh God, yeah, she catches life. you princess style. Oh my goodness. And she's just like, well, you know, if you wanted mm. to jump into my arms, sweetheart, you could have just said something. And then sits you down. And oh she is, like, rather muscular. Like, she's a powerful lady. She's like And she's also taller than you. Oh my god, I like to imagine it's at this moment that Dietrich looks out the window. <laughs> <laughs> What? Why would you jump? You could have hurt yourself. Oh, oh, it's all no. right. I called him. It's oh, fine. No, look, look, I found I found some very beautiful and strong. Arm. You see, oh. you see the captain go. I'm not that strong. I'm I'm just I just I I just have a a, a lot of practice look, with you know look, with with look with, at with, all with those muscles. You didn't you didn't do all that work for nothing. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and, and she, you know, the, the captain just kind of, like, looks very, very proud of herself. 
Anyway, um, are you coming? Are you coming down here so we can go, or oh am I leaving you? My God. Yeah, I'm oh coming no, down. Here I go. Just, I'm walking away. God. Now. I'm leaving. Yeah, I fucking I'm rush back outside. <laughs> Uh, all right, so you you kind of come down, and there's now a a cart and buggy or a mule and buggy ready to take you. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow you with a, with a with a cart with a mule and buggy, you're going to be able to you're going to be able to travel two hexes a day, um, which is good for you guys because you have six days worth of travel on foot. So you got you got uh, three days on horse and buggy. Uh, there and then three days back. <laughs> um, is there any bit of like prep you want to do before you leave town? Um, mm. File a police report for being for someone locking me in my room. <laughs> oh, you've already you literally already did that by <laughs> by uh, by a complimenting the um complimenting the the guard captain and then just telling her hey somebody locked me in my room i want you to get to bo the bottom of it um as much as she is a cat girl she is very golden retriever in uh in in the way she acts so <laughs> good good for her good for her um other than that i've got i've got literally everything i need even though i could probably actually get stuff but I'm good. Everyone else? I, we good? Do we need I anything? Believe Seth, I, think we're all set. I believe Seth would um check with everyone if they have enough rations, if they have enough supplies for a long trip, all that kind of stuff. So you look uh, at the roll twenty, you're you're going right here where I'm pinging. Okay. Let me zoom in to that little pink. Yeah. Uh, Alula will probably pull out a bag and show, like, this is why she is flat broke. There's just so many, like, trinkets and baubles in there and a bunch of food <laughs> that you wouldn't mm. think. And be like, I am set, but I cannot buy any more. I used my last bit of coin at the bar for a nice drink that I may or may not got him kicked out of. So... You know, if, you need, if you need any necessities... I can probably help you. Oh. But like oh. I uh uh but if you like look into like uh Midas's bag, it's literally just the bare basics. You can probably even see some fucking dust in there. <laughs> just <laughs> fucking empty. Midas so. has nothing. Alula has everything. <laughs> yeah, listen. If you need if you need something and you don't have the money for it. I might be able to help, maybe. I don't know. Depends if if depends on depends on if that one needs anything, I guess. But <laughs> you know. I I love how I always how I always do this where like I got I got a bunch of stuff prepped uh earlier in the day and then totally forgot to save my work. So oh, I now have no. to go in. So I now have to go in and re-upload the like, the the travel oh, map. No. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, we can stall for time if you need us to. Alula uh, goes around. Really, it'll literally take me like two seconds. Thank you. Nice. Alula goes yeah. around. Go, go, go right ahead. And says, Alula Makati, Alula Makati, Alula Makati. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, swordsman, swordswoman or man, uh, by day. That's it. By night, like, I guess. Why is your name six names long? No, no, no. It's just a little Makati. <laughs> uh, I'm Ida mm. Sonder. I have an axe. Cool, cool, cool. Love the axe. Love the flavor. Um, charming, strong. Eat shit on you the ground. You tried really though. hard. You did. I didn't eat. I didn't eat shit because I was caught in some very strong arms. You were dramatically falling and then was graciously... Actually, no. Keep charming the guard captain. Maybe? Maybe something can blossom from this. I think she, like, I think, uh, she gets, like, real close to Alula and goes, I don't care where I am. As far as long as I can get any distance from that one, why? I'll take it. 
Why? I'm the reason you're alive. Whoa. Wait, what? Is this your mother? No. Technically, yes. <laughs> no. I like to think I am like a god, in oh. my personal opinion. Yeah, oh. yeah, you're a god that doesn't know what personal space is. Kind of like how my parents think they're gods. Interesting, I'm so s Puts a hand on. Midas, I am so sorry. I know I how this happens. Say, I just want to say, as this conversation is happening, a little pygmy rock comes flying down and perches on Cess's shoulder. <laughs> Aww, a little guy? Yeah, a little, little tiny uh, blue and, and uh, gold bird uh, come and, comes in and perches down on, on Cess's shoulder. Uh, Cess, you actually uh, have probably noticed that in the town, just for your, your, in your brief period of time, there is one other person in this town that, you, that has a similar bird to you. Yeah, although not quite, but... I'm not going to get into that right now. I want it to be a surprise. <laughs> Don't listen to this one. She's not a god. She's just annoying. I have just saved your life on like three separate occasions. I don't know what you're talking about. Saving my life and being literally up my ass if you could be is what you are like 99% of the time. I appreciate Only... you. Only one of those life savings were from situations I caused. The other two were completely natural. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever makes you sleep at night. I I don't sleep at night. Yeah, because you're too busy trying to get into my room. I watch you sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. God. Anyway. We all ready to go? Can we can we get this uh can we get this show on the on the uh on the old? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. We're, we're... If if uh if you guys um if you guys want to head out, I just need one person to roll me a D twelve and one person to roll me a D one hundred, please. I, I love, I love Lilo. I'm so sorry for your loss. It's like, damn, I wish. I wish. Oh, your pa your parents <laughs> thinks they're a god. Sometimes my parents think that too. I get it. I understand. I have Thanks. a d12. Thank you. All right. Oh. I, I think Mida should roll the d100. So the yeah, yeah 100%. It's, it's, it's rolling right now. Hold on. It's literally taking so long to- I think it's taking so long because I have- Hold on. For holding? Okay. Uh, th and th and thank you for holding. Roll 20, get your shit together. Come on. Right? <laughs> Roll 20, get your shit together. I am uh, like- I'm like three steps away from just getting my actual dice out. I mean, I will, I will, uh, 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 there's also a dice roller in the Discord. Oh, shit, yeah, there is, hold on. You All can, right, you can just hand? roll, roll, uh, it's, uh, exclamation, exclamation point. point. Roll. Yeah, exclamation point roll. Four. Uh, four? A 12 and a four. Ooh. On the D100. Yes. <laughs> oh. Or on the D100. See, now okay. Or a 23. No, 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 don't <laughs> count the 23. No, the four. <laughs> We're going for it. Right. Hey, remember that? Forward. Remember that legendary beast that we were too weak to fight? I think uh, that could be it. Well, 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 well. well. Uh, well, yeah, that, well. Not, not that legendary beast. Oh, okay. But a legendary beast. Hey, a the guard captain said there'd be major money out of these, and a little would yeah, be like, yeah, legendary, legendary, yeah. legendary beasts, uh, faded beasts. Ones that I was not prepared to to pull up, <laughs> even though I totally should have been. Um, so you guys are kind of going through the forest, and and then and the de the jungle density is is very, very like it's very hot. Um, you are in like the trop most tropical area of UEs, um, and you all kind of uh, I I need to I need to fix and assign your your like characters to your tokens but um this is where you are 
um, uh, on the map here. Um, and no, the the grid does not exactly line up, but I'll fix that in post. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you guys, you guys find yourself on a long kind of wind. Uh, you, yeah, no, you, you, it's, you, it's literally just a, just a square. Um, yeah, yeah keep doing your thing, I'll fix it. Up. But, yeah, so, you guys find yourself, uh, yourselves kind of wandering through the, uh, the wood, um, and, and your, your heart, your cart and buggy, um, are kind of, like, rumbling along, um, as you notice, uh, actually, you know what? All of you roll me a perception check uh, as you as you're kind of rumbling along. Um, Save. Okay. Um, I'm replace. I'm, I'm deleting my token and replacing it. That's totally fine. There we go. Now I have a token. Okay. Perception. Twenty-one. Yes. Roll perception. A okay. four. I, ha I have to. Uh, God, where, what the, oh god, where, this is fine. It's, a, it's oh, an alphabetical order. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I need to, I need to beat Dagtrix. I need to beat you better. Um, <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> Beth, How you're dare. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, it's the okay. incessant need to be better. <laughs> okay. So, natural 20, 25. Midas, you are the first one to hear the beating of heavy wings oh, on on the horizon. Uh, now, you know the name of the continent that you were on, uh, if you'll recall. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The the name of the continent you are on is oh, no. are the, the dragon lands? No, they're the baby lands. Oh. It's a land to only babies. No. Um yes. Please don't. Please don't repeat <laughs> the thing that, that my first DM ever did with me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Y'all roll real poorly on the random encounter table. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> um so would anyone like to roll me uh knowledge nature? For just the sound of the the wing beating, absolutely. Um, does it have to be trained? No, you can still roll it. I'll oh. let you roll it. You just can't. You just you just roll me what a deep one. Do I should I roll a? But I didn't really notice it because I rolled a four, so I probably shouldn't roll, right? Yeah, you have no idea. Okay. You don't even hear what's happening. You just you just I know that your friends are starting to freak 20s. out. You just know your friends are starting to kind of freak out as as each of them hear mm -hmm. the beating of thick, leathery wings on the horizon. Uh, a shadow is cast over the area. I will fix it in just a second where you can see the enemy you're potentially about to fight uh, as soon as Roll20 decides to stop being a little bitch. Hey, is that your oh, second it's... crit already? Yeah. 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 That's <laughs> crit number two. Um. So, Midas, you notice it first. The beating of the wings, the heavy uh, falls of the um, the heavy falls of of the the wind as the trees begin to crack from the from the might of the wings of what you very much know to be, especially in this area of the Dragonlands, the wings of a black dragon. Oh, great. God damn it. God bless. Okay. <laughs> Even the same color as the one. <laughs> okay, all so, right, all right. So for context, will, um, uh -huh. the, the first ever combat I ever had in Pathfinder, which was my first ever tabletop RPG, was as a melee sorcerer against a black dragon. I'm so sorry. <laughs> remember remember when I said I wouldn't be mean to you guys like I am my other Pathfinder group? Yeah. I lied yeah. to you. 
The dice said, I... fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I lied to you. Uh, I am, as a DM, just a mean, mean person. Uh... <laughs> Uh, as, as each of you, um, as each of you, uh, begin to, to hear the beating of the wings and the heavy footfalls of the dragon, what do you do? Uh, 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 oh, shit. I make sure Illy, my pygmy rock, my familiar, is close to me <laughs> and get ready for whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, nothing. I'm, I'm, fr <laughs> I'm freezing, y'all. I, I don't got nothing. Uh, hide in the bush. <laughs> hide in the bush. You got nothing. No, just, just, oh, oh. You know... So while I while I get a a token for Black Dragon because apparently Roll Twenty doesn't fucking have one. Yeah. Um. Uh. Let me explain to you how much worse this could have been. Yeah. Oh, God. yeah. Um. So with with uh your uh roll of a um of the the uh the natural 20 you know there are two types of dragon in the southwest area of the dragon lands um one of them uh is feared by even the fiercest of red dragons there is an ancient purple dragon in the southeastern area of the dragon lands um and a purple dragon uh, purple dragons are nocturnal, extremely powerful hunters that will absolutely fuck you up <laughs> if given the chance. I've got, got an idea. I've got an idea. Okay. It's a stupid idea, but we'll see if it works. Oh no. No. Oh. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. We're good. Uh, <clears throat> you find that icon yet, Belle? Yeah, I'm, I got it. Uh, I'm just saving it, saving the image right now. You're saving it in your brain? Nope, I am saving it to my computer. Uh, oh. I think because no one has told Alula anything that is happening, uh, they're just mindlessly talking about things. Like, I imagine they're just having a small conversation. They're still carrying on the conversation, even though everyone has fallen silent. <laughs> Uh, you, uh, Alula very suddenly sees a massive fucking dragon land in front of her. Oh! <laughs> why did she, uh, why did not, uh, excuse me? <laughs> Guys, there's a dragon uh, right in front of us. Um, okay, I've got, I've got the most, God, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, damn, this is a stupid fucking idea. Uh, don't, don't think, just, just fucking act. Uh, we mean no harm. Please leave us alone. <laughs> I'm not being paid enough to do this today. <laughs> Can I try to reason with the fucking dragon? Um, so... So what was your role on the knowledge nature check? 20. Nat natural 20. Okay. You would know that this particular dragon is a young dragon, and he doesn't exactly seem like the type to try and negotiate. But he will chuckle at you and just... Oh! <laughs> oh my god, oh wait. Oh, that's a better idea. <laughs> no, no, I think I'm just going to eat you. You want money? He just got a cock said and goes, money? Do are you, you, are you here money? to give me an offering? How I have uh and I am accounting for the money that will future go missing. Uh just to save myself the trouble. I have two thousand two hundred and seventy three gold pieces on me right now. If I give that to you, will you leave? Uh he you see him like think about it for a second and go What do the rest of them have? 
one of us is broke. I know the one That's... behind. I know the one behind me doesn't have anything. I don't know about that one. Hiding in a bush, you just gave away my position. <laughs> uh, yeah, Why roll, you do roll this? stealth. By the way, if you're hiding in a bush, uh, roll stealth. Um, I know, I know, I know. Names are hard. Oh, oh yeah, no, D Dietrich. Dietrich's is gone. Like you, you got to point to Dietrich's, and they're just not there. Oh, uh, that's fine. <laughs> Thank God, I finally lost her. A uh, bad news is your dragon. Uh, God, what's what the fuck? The uh, broke set. one's about to become lunch. Uh, how about you leave the broke one alone, you take the money, whatever the fuck Seth has over there, and please let us go. <laughs> I, I already have a headache. I jumped through a fucking, listen, 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 I jumped through a fucking window this morning, okay? I don't do have you, time for this. Do you really think I care about that? You hear that? I, I'm sorry, did you just mock me? Listen, man. I'm offering you Roll money. Roll deck save. Yeah, sure, <laughs> bud. Sure, uh, my guy. Alula also, uh, Alula and Dietrich also roll a deck save. How, how the fuck do I roll a? How the fuck do I roll a save? Dex. Oh, is that a reflex? Yeah, reflex save. It would be a reflex save. Sorry. Uh. uh oh. Uh, ten. Ten. Twenty-one. Right. Okay, so you're still 20. gonna take half. Uh, you're still gonna take, you're still gonna take half of, uh, the 66 acid damage that is about to come down your way. 66 or 66? 6d6. It's a young black dragon. Oh, yeah, that'll still probably kill me. It's 24 points of acid damage. <laughs> exactly your HP amount. Oh no. Uh, yeah. Oh no. I immediately put down the zero. <laughs> and you're and it was acid. So you know what happens, right? I don't. I don't. You're, you're melted to death by acid. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm not going to be mean to you guys. Me says one wrong thing. Bell, ah, I melted your follower. Hold on, before I before I let that happen, because that is an immediate death, and I don't want that to be I don't want that oh, to be how the session opens. I will allow you great I, I will I will allow you to have moved over fucking here so you are not in the line <laughs> of the fucking cone. Oh I'm trying to do math in my head. Uh, let's see if I'm gonna roll a roll a percentile on a fifty or higher, uh Dietrich was smart enough to go over there. Please don't okay. die immediately. Oh, you're, you're awesome. Dead. You were definitely dead. smart enough at a 92. Yeah, you're <laughs> fine. You don't get hit with acid. Uh, <laughs> as the dragon is now fucking advancing. Um, so here's what I'll allow you to do. You can you can do one of two things. You can roll initiative and fight this fucking dragon. Uh-huh. That is an option. It did just expend its breath weapon. That is an option. Or, or... or the other option is I will allow you to try and figure out before I make you fight this actual fucking dragon at level three uh, with like four of you. Um, if you can potentially creatively get out of this situation and how to do so. Okay. Um... Run the fuck away. I mean, I that is an can... option. That is an option, but do you think you can outrun a dragon 60 foot flight speed? 120 at a dash. Hmm. I think I can run. I, it would keep pace with me, or I think, if I remember. Because doesn't it calculate your dash on this world? Yep. On this week? Yeah, that's as much as I can run, too. No, I can. I, my run is 140. Yeah, so he would outpace you. He would? Okay. Yeah, he would outpace you in the air. Uh okay. Okay. Um hmm. Oh god. I'm thinking. So think about the things you know about this area. Oh god. They have given you some information that could potentially save your lives. Um Bell, sorry, I had to go answer the door real quick. Um You are okay. 
just as a quick recap, um, what's the situation at hand? Uh, the Midas it mocked the dragon and was tried, sprayed with I, acid. I tried to bribe it, then got annoyed, and then mocked it, and then I got sprayed. That's what happened. And the dragon is now advancing toward you, your group, and you have... I'm giving you two options. You can either roll initiative and fight the fucking dragon, or you can think of the thing, the information I've given you about this area and find a creative solution to get out of this situation. What a, what a, what a first session. Uh, okay. The dice have decided that you motherfuckers I... are, are, are fucked. Do I know what purple dragons are relatively weak to? Is there a role uh, I can do for that? So, roll knowledge nature. Ten. That's a ten. Purple dragons, uh, because purple dragons are pretty much known throughout the world as the apex predators of the dragon community, they're not weak to anything. This is a black dragon. They're the immune to almost... Say what? Yeah, but this is a black dragon. Yeah. But I do believe uh, uh, Creepy asked about purple yeah. dragons. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you said it was purple earlier. Nope, no, there black. is a purple dragon in this area. Oh, no, then I'm specifically That's... asking about this kind of dragon. Oh, black dragons are weak to um, fire damage. Fire. Oh, I don't have that. But again, uh, the one piece of information you do have is that the other type of dragon that's in this area hunt dragons as their prey. Um, so we just gotta find the bigger dragon. Um, Bell, question. Yes. Being from the dragon lines myself, would I know how to get the attention of a purple dragon? So there's only one purple dragon in the Dragonlands because there's only one purple dragon in all of UEs. Oh. Um, this particular purple dragon is known as Calamitous. Uh, Calamitous is a purple dragon who was the first son of the goddess Thorin Hell Queen, and saying your tribe specifically, do not say his name because. If you say his, like, legend says if you say his name out loud in the jungle, it catches his attention. Boom. Brilliant fucking idea. Okay. Um, do we know the name of the black dragon? The black dragon had actually said its name, uh, Beatrix the Calamity. Okay. Um, Seth is going to start chanting Calamitous while trying to find some place to hide. <laughs> roll... Every, you don't even have to roll Perception at this point. Um, I have to make this uh, this token much larger. Hold on. Um, oh no. So you hear the beating of wings as a shadow passes over the area. Uh... Shadow much larger than that cast by your uh, the the black dragon in front of you, as you hear uh, what is what essentially amounts to the Godzilla roar, mm -hmm. as a kaiju of a dragon, giant purple scales, bright uh, luminous light coming from its throat as it just boom 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 boom. Who dares speak the name Calamitous? And it just kind of scans the area and locks just dead onto Cess. <laughs> she hits the floor on her knees, um, like almost on a pleading position. He goes, That's a good start. What? I am sorry to have called your name, oh, great. Um, what is a good title for Calamitous, by the way? Uh, 
destructive one. He is the first son of the god of destruction. I am sorry to have called upon your name, O oh great destructive one. But I failed to see an alternative to our predicament. And what happens to be your... Pre and he looks over and sees the black dragon who has turned to face him. And you see his <laughs> eyes like flash green. Everybody make me a charisma save. So uh, let me let me check what that would be called in Pathfinder. My brain sometimes uh, does the... Fortitude, reflex, and will. Will save, yeah. Roll a will save uh, as... as uh, you are, uh, as just by being in the presence of this dragon, you could potentially be frightened. Did I roll? Did I, oh. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, yes, yes, you're terrified. Midas, you two. Alula, on the other hand, you, you, uh, Alula and Dietrich, you're fine. You, you're not, I fucked you're not. around, I fucking found out. Babe. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. Alula is pissed off that now she, now they have acid covering their outfit, and it's like, oh, so gross, and then the other dragon's like, oh, great, you're gonna solve the problem. You're gonna solve the, this little- The black dragon, having rolled behind the, my DM screen here, the black dragon failed with a natural one. Oh, oh, oh my god. And is Take terrified. Care of you- you all see it attempt to fly up and out, and without even having to lift off the ground, the massive jaws of the purple dragon, uh, hold on, I'm just gonna immediately snap over and kill that fucking, the black dragon. Jesus Christ. <laughs> just a single snap of its jaws, and the black dragon is viscera in half on the ground, uh, in two places. Oh my fucking well, that god. Was, that was easy. <laughs> just gotta do that to all of our problems. No. They just gotta uh, a bigger threat. Yeah, now now you have uh, Calamitous, the purple dragon demigod, in front oh. of you. <laughs> Go ahead and delete that. Uh, can, so, just so you're aware, just so you're aware, Calamitous has three health bars. Uh-huh. <laughs> he will look down at at, uh, at Cess and go, I do you this favor in the service of your queen. Should you, should she, should you see her anytime soon, let her know that her favor has been repaid on your behalf. And the dragon will, like, shift, and it's almost like the barometric pressure around you changes as it begins to lift off. Your ears pop, the, the, the like, wind around you, it's like almost like being next to a hurricane as it takes off in the air. And you are left alone... Uh, in on the road. Uh oh, oh my uh -oh. goodness! You are so smart. Look at that! You killed the dragon who decided to burn holes into my dress. Thank you. Oh my god! I do want to point out that Sess is currently having a mental breakdown. <laughs> it's okay. Sess Cess will be um, just fine. Not because of Calamitous, but because of what he said. The debt repayment over stupidity? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, now now Seth owes the Rat Queen a favor. Yikes. Yes. The Rat Queen! <laughs> that is, that is, le that is legitimately her name. And that's her voice. <laughs> is the Rat Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Sess, you now know that you owe the Rat Queen a life debt. Okay, oh, life oh, debt. God. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> uh, Dietrich, seeing that 
uh, Midas was injured is going to immediately go and check on her. I'm are, fine. You don't. Need are you okay? Fine. You looked like you got no. covered in acid. Are you all right? I'm fine. I'm great. Are you I've sure? never been. Be I've never been better. Actually, I've actually never been better. <laughs> Midas is still shaking from fear. Are you okay? Never... Do you need... No, no, don't. Do you need I'm to be fine. taken care of? I can heal you up no. a little bit. Maybe. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean, maybe? I can try. <laughs> you you mean you mean you think you can try to I, heal me? I put bandages on your wounds, probably. Yeah, please put bandages on my acid wounds. That's gonna go great. Well, obviously, so, I'll I'll find plants to neutralize it. So mm -hmm. you all, um, you all are uh, slowly able to you like as as you kind of um, as as you essentially uh, are um, say you know talking about this, uh, your you notice that the sun is beginning to set. Oh, it's probably probably a bad idea to be out in the open in sunset in or in in that nighttime in the Dragonlands. Mm -hmm. uh, so would you like to set camp, or are you going to try and do another two hexes overnight? Uh, mm. I mean, I'm good with whatever. I mean. Do we want to be in the middle of the night ambushed by another fucking dragon? I, no. Or wyverns, or lindworms, or any of the yeah. other things that should, exist in Dragonlands? We should hide somewhere and, 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 and not get murdered. So, just so you're aware, this little, this little spot right over here is a cave mouth. Ooh. Oh my god, perfect. Literally perfect. The are there, cave mouth. Uh, are there signs of gnolls in the cave mouth? <laughs> You you can investigate it by walking in and rolling me a perception check. Perception, absolutely. I think I get a. I think you get a plus two to that if it's for Knowles. Miss uh, Alula, your name was. Sorry about your clothes. Yep, it's I'll okay. Please do. I would love that. I would cherish that. You are amazing. Uh, natural, oh natural one. You know, you it's know a what? twelve total. Uh, I... It's it's a cave. What if I try? What if I try? What if I try that? <laughs> what if you try that? You one? can. What if I try to one up? As soon, I, I'm using the buff I got from getting it. Get, getting it. That'd be great. Yes. <laughs> okay. So no, there are no signs of of gnolls here, though there are massive like webs. Mm -hmm. Um, and. What seem to be it's not spider webs. Like there's a di there's a distinct difference, but there's webbing in here. So something lived here, and there seems to be an empty cocoon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cozy. But that's all you see inside. Can I clear out all the webbing with my axe? No, don't you get may. rid of the hammock. <laughs> don't get rid of the hammock. I, I, in the midst of pulling out the axe, I'm sorry. Don't get rid of the, the hammock. hammock. What do you mean the hammock? No, you're not. If we're crashing here, you're not sleeping on a web. No, that's a hammock. It's just a very fancy one. No. No, you know what? No. The cracked Look, open cocoon is just a I'm fancy the hammock. Intelligent, I'm the intelligent nature person. That's a hammock. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. whatever. Anyway, anyway, I take out down all the webs. Okay. Uh, as you as you take all the webbing down, you you notice uh, there's there's clear um, like signs of something hatched out of this cocoon rather recently, actually. Um, mm -hmm. Roll knowledge nature. Yeah, yeah. Everyone or who? Everyone, whoever, whoever's kind of helping with the with the who? with the. Five. Yeah. Anyone else? Whoever's yeah, whoever's helping, you can roll knowledge nature. Fourteen. Uh, I'm debating if I want to roll it because I feel like oh. Alula's like ew webs. Alula, Alula, kind of gross. Alula, 
I already got acid on my dress and now you want me to sleep in webs? Gross. Disgusting. I'm cleaning How... out the webs. Oh my god, do you what? not know what those insert nature check here? Do you not know what that is? Uh, <laughs> I don't no, know. I don't. I don't my... either. The only person that does the only person that does is Sess. Sess, you know that this this webbing actually belongs to a humanoid. Uh, there is a race in UEs known as the Aquila, or uh, commonly known as the Mothers. They are massive, 11 foot, uh, mostly uh, asexually reproducing moth people. Um, uh, and they go in search of the world to find light and bring it back to the Maw, which is an area in the northern part, northernmost part of UEs, that splits between the main continent and the continent of Zima. Um, this is a Mother Den. Someone <laughs> recently had their, um, their chrysalid moment and, uh, and is now in full mother adulthood. Aww. Do I know if they're going to come back at all? Normally, uh, once the chrysalid moment happens, they do not return because that is the moment when they are uh, when they get their wings. Up until that point, they don't have the wings that allow them to fly. Got it. Normally, so, after the chrysalid moment, they return back to the maw. So, as revenge for the Black Dragon incident, um, Cess is going to tell everyone that we should be careful, but not, not going to say why at all. I mean, we should always be careful. Yes. You know what? Never mind. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. I think I'm literally already on my way to clearing this thing out anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um roll yeah. roll perception. Me. Yeah, you. Yeah. Or yeah. no, everybody. Everybody roll perception. Ooh. What if we perceived in the moth cave? What if we perceived in the moth cave? <laughs> that is a good question. What I don't see shit. In the moth cave? What, what I really didn't... don't want to be in this cave. What if you with all these webs? I don't. <laughs> Alula has her eyes closed. Like no. So don't, it's don't not take it out. really an it's not really an eyes thing. Oh. It is an a hearing thing. Um, you guys hear the fluttering of wings. Soft, fast okay. <laughs> fluttering as, uh, just around the corner, if you look, uh, in the, the, uh, West March General, uh, you see a, uh, moth woman kind of peeking around, uh, the bushes Aww. up here, um, and uh, if you want to go over back over, Abby, if you want to take us back over to the um, to the table area. Yeah. Um, so uh, you see this this girl kind of poking her head out and going and kind of like you see her antenna twitching, her, her eyes watching you. They blink sideways instead of up and down. Um, like her head kind of tilting to the side uh, and and and. Um, and and she she looks over each of you and is just just kind of very curious as to what the fuck you're doing in her cave. Um, but she doesn't say anything just yet. She's very shy and she is currently hiding in in the bushes. I want to point out that the moment um, Seth saw her, um, she stopped helping removing the webbing and left the cave. Okay. I don't think Alula's in the cave because, ew. 
Um, Alula, you probably would see her once people pointed her out. She yeah. is a very like she's so as as cute as the image is. She's eleven feet tall. Oh, what is with all? Lula's just like, oh my god, there's so many tall people, and why are they all hot and scary? Uh, uh, the moth, oh so, my gosh. So the moth, the moth traits, um, the moth, uh, moth folk racial stats, uh, creepy. Uh -huh. um, you would use the Striga stats, and in, but instead of hatred, you replace it with the intimidation, uh, because they're very large creatures, and most people are afraid of them. Interesting, interesting. Okay. So if you want to play a mother, you absolutely, absolutely. can. Absolutely. That's going to be my backup What's the, character. What race my is that? Character too. Uh, oh, so it'd be, it, it would be Striga in, in, uh, in, in, the, in Pathfinder. Not all of us looking at the moth people going, Welp. Oh, I can't find the Striga. I will, I will, um, I will send you the SRD. Absolutely. Uh, for it, uh, but, um... I mean, unless anyone alerts Midas, Midas is gonna continue, um... Is this gonna continue its business? Midas, Midas, you, you literally are the first one to notice her. Uh, fuck. Alright. I, I... I know how I come across, despite this woman also being incredibly tall. As I just put... I put my weapon on my back, clear it off. Sorry, didn't know this thing was inhabited. It's... Oops, my bad. You notice, she doesn't seem, like, when you speak to her, she, she kind of backs up. Um, she doesn't seem to understand what you're saying. Ah, cool. Uh, try Celestial. Uh, you say the exact same thing in Celestial? Yeah. Uh, you see her face light up, and she will, like, approach you very quickly. Like her movements are almost like you know how in horror movies, uh, like the the like uh, creatures that are very like very fast, like and kind of jerky motions almost. Mm -hmm. It's almost like that, but there's a grace to it. Um, and she like flutters down and she's looking over you and she's kind of like she touches your face if you let her and she's yeah. just like. You speak the tongue of the light, and she's speaking back in Celestial. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I do. Uh, yeah. She's, like, tilting her head back and forth, and she's, like, turning your head if you, like, she, she's got, like, her hands cupped underneath, like, your jaw. Yeah, it's like, fine. Like, gently, Look, and she's just, like, 11... inspecting Belle, you. Bell, respectfully, this one is 11 feet tall. With obvious boundaries, she can do whatever the fuck she wants. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, you notice uh, as she's kind of inspecting you, like your jaw, a second set of arms comes forward, oh and like, uh, and and like picks you up, so she can oh she can like inspect you. She's just like, Dang, man. you're so beautiful. Uh, thanks. And she'll like sit you down and go. Do your do your other friends speak the the, the language of the light? Does anyone uh, else speak celestial? Does anyone else speak uh, celestial? Uh, no. no, I have not that. I have the language of the elementals. Uh, I speak uh, <laughs> uh, that, de, does Dietrich speak celestial? I have common and elephant. Uh, no, they don't. It's oh, just me. oh, that's a shame. I know. Do you, Do you know what languages they do speak? I don't. I don't. I haven't quite been able to learn. The, the the language of the common folk, but um, I haven't much been out of the maw. Uh, I'm on my light quest. I have to find a light and bring it back, but I haven't been able to find one. Um, I can translate for you. Um, um, if you just tell me what languages they speak, I speak um, Elven. I can speak uh, I can speak Dwarvish. I can speak Halfling, but I I can't speak Common. I think uh, while being manhandled. Midas just turns around. We got any Elvish, Dwarvish? I can speak one? Elves. I, I can. Me too. I can Dwarvish and Elven. Perfect. I, I don't speak Elvish. Uh, then she'll switch back to Celestial. Two of them speak Elvish. Uh, she'll look over to the, the rest of you and go, H Hello, in, in, uh, in Elvish. 
Uh, and she moves yep. from from uh, from doing like manhandling Midas to now she's manhandling Alula. She's doing the same thing to Alula, oh my- like looking her over. <laughs> uh, I think Alula just short circuits. You you are a nervous one. That's that's what I'm getting from you. Oh yes. Are you okay? Oh no. Do you do you, I... do you need help? No, no, no. I am perfectly fine. Everything is okay. And I imagine She'll, like, like very gently like stroke stroke her cheeks. Oh yep. my god. I, I imagine okay. that because of the whole shenanigans with like the wind beating, her hair is no longer in a bun and it's just like slowly levitating and like there's static going through her hair. Like, you see the moth look up at your hair and like her eyes go wide and like almost like glow. Actually, they do glow. Like they're a very luminescent gold color. Oh, it's so beautiful. You have your own light. My God. Yep, yep. Thanks, thanks oh. to my parents. Yep, my parents are very powerful, potent. Uh, part of the storm, elementals, you know. Uh, just, uh, oh yes, 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 yes. The 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 storm. The storm elementals are our children of Priscilla. I I know the, the know them very very well. I um I spent uh, time on Dracora, the island of the elementals, for a long time. So I I was told that I couldn't find light there. Um, but it's okay. I'm here to find my light now. So it'll be it'll be wonderful. I'll I'll find it some sometime. Uh, but it's it's wonderful that you have your own light, and uh, I wouldn't hide it in a bun. Your hair is beautiful, and are, so are you. And she'll, like, set, uh, set Alula down and then move over and do the same thing to Dietrich. Alula puts her head, like, on Midas's shoulder and is dying internally. It's okay, Midas is too, don't worry. Face completely red. Both Midas and, uh... And and Alula are having a crisis. <laughs> did I did I create the the party's adopted NPC? Is that what just adopted happened? Adopted NPC <laughs> that I cannot understand at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, not at all. Um, and she'll she'll look over. She'll look uh, Dietrich over and go, "You're a creator. That is a mighty power." I I made I made Midas over there. I see. You made a light. That is immensely powerful, my friend. You've done so well. So Uh, good. Do you need rest? I need... But Midas is a little injured and could use some rest. Oh, you're injured. And she'll, like, immediately, like, very gently, but very, like, quickly put Dietrichs down and move over to Midas. Uh, Midas, you are once again picked up. And then oh. she expends uh, 15 points of Lay on Hands to oh, heal shit. you. Oh, thank, thank, thank. <laughs> you feel a glowing, like, golden aura surround you, and, like, your, ta- your tattoos that are over your body light up with this golden aura as you are healed uh, for to your maximum hit points. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh... Are any of the rest of you injured? I, I can I can help. Alula uh, just shakily yeah, uh, raises her hand. Uh, they were, they the... were spit on by a dragon. Oh, oh, the... Oh, no. Yeah, that was very rude of him. I... Is the dragon still a problem? Do you need me to take oh. care of him? Dragon's dead. Oh, oh, and she'll kind of look over to the remains of the black dragon. Oh, him. Yeah, no. he came by... He came by uh, a couple days ago. I wouldn't uh, touch the remains if it, what did that, if what I think did that, did that. He'll be back for his meal. Uh, of co- of okay. course. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and she will uh, once again pick a Lula up and also give another 10 points of lay on hands. Uh-huh. Go um, as she said, don't touch the corpse. Um... Could I maybe perhaps um, collect so, a pint of blood? You so you as a as a a, a resident of the Dragonlands would know, mm-hmm. uh, especially being that you called upon him. If Calamitous mm-hmm. bites something in half, he's marked that as his. Got it. Never mind. <laughs> 
if you want to collect the blood, you can, but understand, yeah. uh, understand that a your hands are going to be stained blue, and b, um, Midas will know, or Calamitous yeah, will know. Never, never mind. <laughs> Calamitous will absolutely know that you've you've taken what was his. Yeah, no, and, never and mind. Just, just as a heads up, everybody, you thought the acid breath weapon was bad. The 30d8 plasma <laughs> breath. <laughs> no. I was like, Jessamine would it. be resistant to that, but that's it. 30d8 <laughs> plasma breath. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. I it'd be fine. Yeah, oh, no, we'll kill yeah, him eventually. No uh, or be friend. Upon upon realizing that she had not healed you to full, she's going to expend the rest of her lay on hands to heal you to full, huh. uh, Alula. Oh, look at her. Um, and she kind of like inspects you and goes, "Okay, you're all healed." Hey, thank How you. Much you thank you. We received, by the way. In total, uh, twenty four, twenty four points of damage. Ooh. Uh, you were not in range. Uh, yeah, you you're were, fine. You, you were okay. you were not in range. It was just Alula right. and Midas. Yep. Okay. You were not in range of the cone. Uh, it was pointing the other way. Um. So, uh, the moth will kind of head into the cave, and you see her. Uh, for for a second, she'll look around, think for a moment, and then cast web, and create beds for each of you. Because that is a natural uh, ability that I gave the the moth the moth yeah. people. Yep. Uh, come, back, come back to my sick. We're not sleeping on webs. Yeah. Alula saying, I'm not going to touch those webs. Pretty moth folk just made that. I'm going to touch those webs now. This is fine. Okay. <laughs> this I'm is fine. I want my this web hammock. Beautiful, beautiful moth, uh, moth folk uh, creates web. Uh, yes, web. <laughs> <laughs> web the web to... equals yes. This is going to look at the rest of the party and ask, what happened? Uh, friend. Oh, name. I hello. I'm Alula Makati. That was rather rude of me. This is um, Vitus. Uh huh. Um. Have you hold on? Have you introduced yourself to one another? Uh, Alula yeah. did. That is my question. Alula <laughs> did. Alula and Midas yeah. have like made formal introductions yeah. to each other. Yeah, Alula I did. Midas. Shake everyone's Ten hands. Members. Going. Alula Makani, Alula Makani, Alula Makani. Yeah, yeah. So Alula is the only one that I do believe formally introduced themselves to everybody else. Yeah, I think Seth would have at least said her name, not the whole name and last name thing, mm -hmm. to when she checked if everyone had enough supplies. Yeah. Okay. So, Alula, as you begin to say your name, the moth will come over and, like, place a finger over your lips and a, a, a hand on your cheek. We do not use names here. Okay. There are things that will listen and will take. We do not use names. Oh. You are little light. And she'll, like, pet you on the head. Of course. No, no names. Mm -hmm. this, is, uh, this is was said in Elvish, I assume. Yeah, this is said in Elvish. Uh, I did not hear. I did not catch a like of. Uh, in an in very brisk, shaky comment, she goes, "Uh, our names mean nothing here. Don't say them. Nothing." Look, looks over at looks over at night chicks that probably sweats so hard over that over the name. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. You hear that? No, the names mean nothing here. Okay. So that. Uh, what? She will. She will kind of. Uh, had you had had you said your name, essentially, what she would have done was stopped each of you in kind and said the that exact sentence. Mm -hmm. Um, warning you: do not say your names in the forest. <laughs> Hello, brioche. A, a dog has approached. Um, but yeah, so, uh, so she will kind of gesture you into the cave and go, come, come rest, come rest. Uh, and she'll, she'll, uh, say it in, first she'll say it in Elvish and then in Celestial. And uh, then look at the rat folk and just pout for a second. Seth, uh, Seth, 
Jess, do you what, what languages do you speak? Well, I know common, draconic, goblin, and null. Uh-huh. Uh, uh like as any of So those. goblin in in Uise is a dialect of halfling. Oh. <laughs> so it is it's still considered goblin, but it is a dialect of halfling. So it's like it's like speaking Spanish from from Puerto Rico versus Spanish from Mexico. Got it. <laughs> so there's some overlap. Most yeah, overlap. there's a lot of it, overlap. Yeah, there's a lot of overlap, but there's there are some distinct differences. Yeah, got it. Okay. Uh, so technically, she speaks I, a language that you speak. Yeah. Um, <laughs> She's going to sing Golin. Um, I'm sorry, I don't um, didn't understand either of the other two languages. Uh, and she will reply in halfling, which is similar enough. Uh, oh, 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 you you only speak the language of the wee folk. I understand. Don't say your name. Please come in the cave. Nice to meet you. Nice don't to say your meet name, you too. Please come into the cave. And says go, gets. In the cave, very comfortably, and <laughs> feeling at home. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so, <laughs> here is what here's what I will have to leave at midnight. Uh, is that am I understanding yeah. that correctly? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so, what I want each of you to do is I want each of you to roll me a one d twenty and add your wisdom modifier to it, and okay. then I'm going to ask each of you in kind what that roll was. But what one d twenty? Plus your wisdom modifier. So that's your wisdom check? Yeah, it's just a wisdom check. Okay, so just uh, clicking wisdom should be good oh. enough? Yeah. Why did it not work for me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why it didn't work. Okay, cool. Oh my hey. god, Midas twins! Oh my god, no. the creator! Don't twin oh me. God. Don't twin me. Don't twin me. So we're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna go um uh lowest to highest. So we're gonna start with Sess. Okay. Um Sess, as you drift to sleep, you begin to dream. And your dreams normally um when in when you're comfy in your caves and and you know, able to and in a bed, normally your dreams aren't that bad, but this evening shook you. Uh, you just witnessed the most, the second most powerful dragon in Dewey's bite another dragon in half. Uh, you awaken, or at least you feel like you awaken, and you look down at yourself and your hands are covered in blue, like your fur has been dyed blue. Your, the smell of burning fur and burning stone almost it's like as if it's if is if coal is being burnt but like at such a high temperature that is vaporizing around you your home the rat kingdom is burning because of at least in in this particular moment something you've done and then and just as you get ready to, you get up, you're ready, you're getting ready to leave, you've got all of your equipment, you're walking out of your door, and then you wake up. The sun rising, your fur still its same normal color, the corpse of the black dragon is gone. But you are safe in the webbed uh, bed that, you, that was provided for you. She as we, immediately starts mm-hmm. fidgeting with her ritual bowling. The little okay. ritual sickle sickle like knife she has. Okay. Is that all you're doing this morning? Yeah, she is um fidgeting while um talking with her familiar because I don't want to keep my spells. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah. Your familiar will, will, will hop over to your shoulder and go, I, I saw the dream. 
I we shared it. Uh, should I go check on them? Yes. Yes. Okay. I shall return. Uh, I should be back within a day. And then your familiar will flutter off. Thank you. Um, next we go to Dijkstra and Midas, or Dietrich and Midas. I see that name, and every time I, I go straight to the Witcher, um, we go to uh, Dietrich and Midas, and you both seem to be having the same dream. Uh, you are in a. St you're back in the Windy Wench. The smell of uh, food. Not the best food you've ever had, but food. Cooking downstairs, the the sound of merriment in the town. And you look out the window, and very suddenly, a shadow passes over the town. And then another. And then another. And then another as four massive dragons, red, blue, green, white, land in the city square. The sounds of panic can be heard from the streets as gunfire and spells are being slung. And very suddenly, the two of you from your rooms see the eye of a massive red dragon. And before you wake, the last thing you hear is, I see you. Damn, bitch. Oh. Tim, Gross. did you sleep like this? <laughs> um, so the two of you awaken uh, to that. What are, how, do, how do your characters react to their, their dreams? I think, like, initially, Midas, first, upon, like, first wake, number one, Midas is okay. Body's still here, because Jesus Christ, what the fuck was that? Uh, and then making sure that, uh, that Beatrix is also there. And then just, like, Aww. lays back down. Are you, are you okay, Midas? Yeah, good. I'm are you fine. sure? That was a scary yeah. dream. Yeah. It's good. We're 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 still here. It's fine. Just just dragon stuff. Do you Something need in the back of your both of your minds echoes the dragon's last words. Yeah. I see you. It's almost being... like a fading faded memory. Yeah. Are we being watched? I mean you see the uh the moth kind of twitch your head and go, Yes. Yes, you are. By a dragon? She'll like look up into the into the sky and go, No. No. Very powerful Fey, but not a dragon. See, we're fine. There's no dragons. We'll live to see another day. Uh Deatrix is gonna scoot about four feet closer to, to Midas. <laughs> she doesn't she doesn't say anything for once. Oh. Uh, and now Ish. we go over to Alula. Alula, Alula, you have a wonderful dream. Yay! You're in a place where you don't that you don't recognize though in this dream. A city almost entirely made of emerald. Um, the streets are lined with bricks made of pure emerald. The buildings are beautiful green and orange spires. There are Massive bunny women walking around, like giant, tall uh, 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 women in like full armor with long bunny ears. And you see uh, f uh, there are kitsune and uh, and several other races that you uh, – th they're not very common in UEs. These are the Hera. Uh, the Hera are commonly associated with the Feywild. Um, mm -hmm. and you see in front of you, after a long stretch of road, is a massive tower. 
Uh, atop this tower is a tall man with long red hair wearing a flowing green robe uh, and bright, bright yellow eyes, freckles adorning his cheeks and nose, and in his hand is a large knotted staff as he slowly floats down to you and goes, Hello there. Welcome to the Emerald City. I am Tavellian, and you recently gave me your name. Oh no. That tracks. <laughs> I am willing to allow you to play a little game to get it back. Are you willing to play? Oh, of course. Wonderful. It's fantastic to hear. I need you to do me one favor, and that's it. That's all I need you to do. I need you to take this, and he'll create a small uh, green orb of glowing green light. I need you to take this, and I need you to take it to that tower over there, and he'll point to another tower. It's a red spiral brick and in just the middle of like a district that has no other buildings around it i need you to take it to the door of that tower mm -hmm. and just push it through the mail slot and then run for your life see i was about to ask you what the catch was but i i understand and if you wish to leave here with your with your name and your soul You'll do as I ask. God. Of course, yeah. Come on. I will give you a head start, however. Mm -hmm. And he'll snap his fingers, and you notice everything around you stop. The people aren't walking. The mm -hmm. air doesn't seem to be breathing. It's almost as if time itself has stopped around you. <laughs> so you have... Uh, 30 seconds on the clock. What are you doing? Um, she would just do the equivalent of... I do not have any spells that are similar to the click in my pace. Uh, and double so check. is she just fucking running? <laughs> just sprinting? I, I believe so. I'm trying to double check because I do have two things from Sylph that are wind-based. I'm double-checking. No, that's Did for... Did you get Step of the Wind? Is that... Uh, I am I am reading through it. Because, uh, like, I can control the wind. Once per day, a Sylph can channel the wind into a single gust, making a bull rush or trip combat maneuver. Uh, that doesn't yeah, apply here. Yeah, you can here. use this to... To dash forward. Yeah, no, you can use that to okay. dash forward. Yeah. That I can, I'll let you get, like... Uh, what is the max range on it? Uh, it's supposed to be on a creature within 30 feet. Okay, so you get an extra 30 feet of immediate movement. Okay, so that would push her, because her movement's 35 right now, so that would push it to 65. Yeah, so you can do 65, uh, and, and just zoomies forward, and, uh, and you know, you, it takes you, uh, 19, 18, and then you get to the door, and the mail slot's big enough for the, the orb, but you see it open and an eye pop out and go, Who are you? Hi, got a special gift for you. Here's the orb. Oh, shit. <laughs> and you see, uh, as the orb pushes into the, um, into the tower, the tower itself begins to, like, uh, basically, like, reality warping in on itself. Uh -huh. As a small red tiefling woman... Uh, exits the, the tower and goes, Who put you up to this? Um. Uh, a very charming fae asked me to do this for a price. So here we are. Now, I think I uh, have he, to go jump off. He did tell you his name. I the DM, or I the player. Forgot. You the DM? Uh, Tavellian. I mean, yeah. Tavellian, uh, actually, roll me knowledge religion. <laughs> Yay! I am intelligent, but am I that intelligent? No. Well, 
well, yes, yes. Natural 20. You would know that that is the god of the Feywild. Okay, she would play it cool and uh, not say the name and be like, you know, the god of the Feywild. And you would also know on that natural 20, uh -huh. this is the goddess of chaos. Oh my god. You have just entered the prank war between Tavellian and Imp. I love <laughs> she oh being bound by a creature who is speaks speaks your mind, very curious, will do pranks, will do anything for attention. Absolutely. This is like, yeah. oh, oh, I know who you are. Well, you know, God versus God, kind of fun. I'm just here. If you want me to prank them back. Run. Okay. You should run. Uh, yeah. So what I'm gonna get, what I wanted you to do is roll me an acrobatics check at advantage. Okay. Uh, I don't know how to do advantage. Just, on... just, just roll twice. Okay. Boop. Boop. Nineteen. You are able to get out of you. You're able to get out of the range before uh, Tavellian and and uh, Imp begin to legitimately just like fight begin to fight in the middle of the in the middle of the square uh before imp's tower is uh is sucked into a, the green orb as is imp yeah and yeah, Tavellian yeah. just like starts bowling over laughing and he goes you did so well little one here's your name back and he'll boop you on the nose and you feel as if something that was taken from you is now returned and when you when you get back to to your your body because mm -hmm. right now you're not in it cool you are you are incorporeal as one would say oh. when you get back to your body um know that i'm watching you you've done so well and then he will snap his fingers and you wake up oh my god Alula is just is just vibrating with excitement mm. You know, everyone's like kind of in recovery. You're like, I had the best fucking thing. Don't at me. Uh, I think I think for a second, it was goes like, man, I re I could have tested out a new name and everything. I could have been a new person. Oh well. Could have. Uh, you hear in your mind as you think that or say it. Would you have preferred that? No, no. This is exciting. This is fun. Okay. I w if you wish, you can give it back, and I can give you a new one. <laughs> I can give you a new one. <laughs> yeah, what you you get you get a nice little guy. I get I see you. You get dragons who are <laughs> watching you, and a dragon uh destroying a whole entire village and being responsible for that said dragon attack. Alula just started a prank war. Between two of the most powerful gods in my pantheon, by the way. <laughs> Just so you're aware. It's okay. I think Alula is fine. Uh Alula Alula, you actually find on your on your person now a brooch sitting on your lap. It's a little green brooch with a tree with many knotted branches coming mm -hmm. out from like the the the, the stem yeah. and uh the the moth will kind of look down and go oh he left you a gift remember the name thing oopsie yes i told you but no no it's it's okay we we ended up everything in in fairness a little ah, did give you your name back yeah and i good 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 Names back, identity secured, pranks started. Oh, 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 you had to pay a debt, I see, I see. Yes, no, that's, that's understandable. He's, he's at least, uh, nice enough to, to let you earn your name back. Um, many fey are not. There is one po very powerful fey by the name of Titanus. Mm -hmm. He, um, he is the other side of the fey well, the, the lord, and... He is, he is not so nice when he takes names. Uh -huh. But he also doesn't take them as frivolously as his brother. Gotcha, the not-so-nice uh, one. With, with your natural 20 roll, yeah. you would know that Titanus, uh, Titanus, along with the goddess Ren, run the wild hunt. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what, what, what? Who is drawing pictures with their... <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, so that, that's where we're going to cut session. Um, that's that, that'll that be the end of, of session one. You guys are kind of in your encampment. I will be messaging each of you uh, over the period of time when we are not playing. Uh, so th one of the things that I do for this particular campaign is we do uh, out of, uh, like, uh, off-stream uh, lore stuff sometimes. Um, oh, I'm down. And so I will text you. Uh, so I will I will text you individually, and then I will also. There's also the off on the march channel, which off on the march is supposed to be an in character role playing channel, so that you can get to know one another. However, creepy question. Yes. Hi. I know you want to make it. You're you're going to be coming as a character in this campaign. Uh huh. Would you like to join this party with your character? Part of me really wants to keep playing Dietrich. You are more than welcome to keep playing Dietrich. Dietrich can just Obviously. level up just one more time as a treat. Obviously, I'll let that be up to Jester. That's, I, you know, Bet Bestie, fucking look at me. Yes. <laughs> so yes, go ahead and level level up to level three. Actually, all of you go ahead and level up to level four. Um, Would I be allowed to, to change the class from Ranger? 100% you would. Your, your dream 100%. awoke in you and decided I need to save <laughs> my creation even more. My creation, 100%. That, my creation that desperately wants to fight anything and everything. Yeah. So what level am I making, Deatrix, then? Four. Four, okay. Level four. I get four uh, level. Maybe I'll make Deatrix the shifter. Ooh. Ooh. Absolutely. I like shifter's uh, vibe. Yeah, absolutely you can. The other the other option is I will I I have told everybody cuz there's a whole section of like empty character sheets that's under secondary characters. I will let you play two characters in this campaign. It's a massive fucking campaign. Right. If you want to do other missions in other with other players, making us. Oh Moth. god, I think my Moth. second character might end up being a mesmerist, but because that class looks very fun. What Wonderful. if uh, what if we're all a cult of moths together on a journey? <laughs> oh my god! All Abby. seeking for the light, our own Poppy. light. Poppy, what if we were two moths? I will say. What if it's three moths have... and a frog? I already have a second character. <laughs> well, what if it's two moths and the frog they adopted along the way? <laughs> you gonna help us see the light? The light? Hey, hey, buddy, the light? come the light? on! Hey, 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 the light? <laughs> so, naturally, no. naturally, the moths speak celestial, because it is the language yeah. of the light. Well, no, the and then thing about common, that is... most of the time. One of the funny things, I picked up Celestial on a fucking whim because I needed a third level. <laughs> well, you were the only one able to communicate uh, with the moth. Uh, now, here's my other question. Yeah. Do I need to build this moth's character sheet? Um, <laughs> Are y'all adopting this moth NPC? I yes. think you do. <laughs> God, I think, you know, uh, Alula, uh, listen. Listen, Poppy, look at me. Yeah. Look at me, Poppy. Oh, this moth lady's got that, four hands. That moth has four fucking hands. What? What? It's a lot of hands to hold. Um. Also, I do have to go get a shower real quick because I have painted today and I have paint all over me. Oh, oh. yeah. No, absolutely. And I have you have. Tomorrow. You have a wonderful evening and thank you for joining us. Uh, just if you want to just say bye to YouTube. Bye YouTube. Bye. Oh, bye. Yeah, yeah, YouTube. Shoot. Bye, bye. Get out of here, YouTube. Uh, Abby, you may stop the recording. Okay.